What's up YouTube? This is Jacob from International Precision Engineering and today I thought I would show you what's inside this safe, how it works, talk about what the mechanism is. If you knew what was inside it, how you could beat it, defeat it, pick it, crack it, whatever you want to call it. So the story on this safe is a little bit interesting um, and some good news for you guys. I've been poached. Um, as you've probably seen, there's a lot of buzz around Intel. Well, we negotiated with Intel and I no longer consult, <laughs> even if I wanted to. I could, it's going to be a lot, a lot better and I could do a lot more projects like this that might be interesting, more interesting to a YouTube crowd. Anyway, we bought a house here in Phoenix and this safe came in the house. I ripped it off the wall because I couldn't find any information on it. I don't even know how much it's worth, where, where, where you would have got it, how much it would have cost. Um, the only, you know, especially for this company, Century, which is in like every Home Depot. I mean, this is kind of like the go-to cheap safe for homeowners. So, so it's, it's amazing that I can't find any information on this model. Um, the only thing that I was able to find was a in-wall safe that would like go behind a picture that has the dual lock so it's got this key you gotta have the key to open it instead of a handle and it's got a combination lock the only like i said the only thing i could find was the wall safe and, it, and even with that nobody showed pictures of what's behind it the lock mechanism absolutely nothing so i mean i even tried to sort of like do the put your ear up to it and spin the dial and things and you know, I'm not a locksmith, so in the end, it's probably maybe a hundred to three hundred dollar safe. I just ripped it off the wall, and luckily, it wasn't into the studs. They just had it into the drywall, but they screwed it down into the finished cabinet that was in the closet. And not only did I ruin the wall in the back because I couldn't get to cut the screws, um, it it ruined the paneling and the whole shelf. So. It's kind of disappointing that they didn't just put a post-it note with the combination. But either way, benefit to you guys. Let's cut it in half. And... Here's what's inside this thing. We got the key which directly actuates the bolt. We've got the combination lock that turns your dials. And what's removed here is this little tin shield that's really just for aesthetics. 
If I were going to crack this lock after looking at it, I would drill a hole here, drill a hole through the tin cover and pull this pin out. And then what would happen is the bolt would come out far enough to go past the, I don't know what they're called, the discs here. It would come out, it would slide out and the door would open. That's all I would have to do is know where this pin was. I would come in, drill two holes, pull the pin and the door would open. Even if you didn't have the key because the key actuates through this little cam thing and if this came out it would just open with even without the key so really having having drawings or images of this safe you could you could with a drill in 20 minutes if you had access to the top you could you could defeat this safe but again, like I said, I couldn't even find any information on the safe whatsoever, so the likelihood of finding drawings or what mechanism it in the safe is highly unlikely. So zooming in on the combination lock here, you can see that the back wheel is connected directly to the dial. These pins here are what turn the separate wheels. So you can move the pin around to change the combination and there's probably instructions how to do that which I don't have. You have to do, for example, to get the safe to open is line up all the deep slots, okay, like this and then the third one and now you can see all three slots are in a line and the bolt can slam in. So looking at this closer, there's a couple interesting features. One, this back wheel is bigger than the other two. So if you come in here and turn this and then tension the key and try and listen for the pin to drop, the only thing you're going to feel is each of these three um, slots in the back wheel. And you can feel this, again, just tension the key. The only place, the only plausible combinations for that last wheel are each of these three spots. Okay? So now that takes, if there's a hundred points on the dial, it takes it down to three possible numbers. And another thing you could do is turn this and feel how much play there is and find out that, oh, I'm looking at about five digits on the combination of play. So now each of the hundred spots on my dial really turn into five, right? So I could be plus or minus two and a half off and still have this work. And another thing you'll notice is these are tapered on the correct ones to help you out and they're not over here. So there's a lot more play when the combination is right than when you're just at a false spot. So, because this wheel, the back wheel's bigger, you can't really sit there and listen for pins to drop like you could in a key lock or things like that. So, having, knowing that if there's 20 possible combinations on the first two numbers, 20 times 20 is 400, 400 possible combinations and three on the back. So 1,200 possible combinations to open this lock. Now, I could probably, like I said, run through that in a couple hours just doing it. Problem is you gotta clear the lock every time, you gotta come back, you gotta pass the second number. And if you do it wrong, it's, you know, you won't know. <laughs> So you really got to be good, you got to be patient, take your time, but you could do it. You could definitely do it.